I'll start with a little introduction to me. So, I achieved、um, a chemistry state rank ninth last year in the HSC, with a full 100 out of 100 external mark, for an overall HSC mark of 99. And I achieved a bronze in the 54th International Chemistry Olympiad, and I also achieved an Australian Chemistry Olympiad gold medal, which means that I placed top four in Australia, and also attended the national summer school. From 2020 to 2022, but I'm more here to share with you my journey. Yeah, so I kind of just did some work after school because in our Olympiad classes there'd be content and there'd also be some homework, and then I did past papers and I just kept my mind inquisitive, asked questions, and as a result, I was able to make it to summer school, which is a kind of camp for the top 20 people. And then I eventually earned a silver medal on my first try, and then made it to the team. So I learned a lot of things. I learned some chemistry knowledge, which was directly transferable into the HSC. Thanks to my Olympia background, I was able to basically solve any question because I'd seen some of the tricks before, and that gave me the ability to be confident heading into the exam. I'm here today to share with you what I learned from my long journey, three plus years of chemistry learning, and a whole HSC Olympia international competitions behind me. And I've also had three years of mentoring as well at James Roos as a chemistry tutor. So what I did was we took those lessons and incorporated it into the chemistry course at Top Logic. I learned that it's really important to not only have the experience, having if you've seen a question before, when it shows up on an exam, you already have the experience and you'll be able to smash that out of the park. But also the mentorship, how to learn and grow through that experience. I've also seen how a fa- strong foundation really. Benefits you down the line. Many people don't often see this because it's so much easier to pursue like quick results, like just memorizing something and then being able to answer the question. But a strong foundation enables you to really connect the dots and be able to tackle more unseen problems instead of just you know figuring out problems you've seen already. But also the importance of how you use your knowledge. There's no point knowing the knowledge but not being able to communicate that to the examiner. There's no point going after the exam. Oh, I already I know that. I, I know I can do that problem, but I didn't manage to get it during the exam. But also, I learned the difference between learning and studying, and there's an important distinction between those words. Learning is the process of asking questions, making sure you stay curious, and studying is quite tedious. So we've taken these concepts and implemented it into the chemistry course. One of our focuses is foundation building. We want our students to have an intuitive understanding of concepts. This is important because it allows you to build a logical rationale. For example, if I were to tell you that boiling point represents how much energy is required to separate molecules, so if I Have a stronger attraction between the molecules. I will need a higher energy to separate them, and that means I have a higher boiling point. Now, if I have a bigger molecule, I have more surface area to make those attractions, and therefore I would have a higher boiling point. And that's what we try to teach our students: is this intuition and foundation behind a concept, so you can approach it step by step. This is important because of our second focus, which is to actually apply knowledge in an examination condition. So. As I've said before, building a foundation is important in developing a logical rationale. Now, this logical rationale is perfect for when you're trying to answer these type of questions, which are explained questions and which are full marks. So, when we teach examination skills, we'll be teaching students to not only interpret the information given in the question, but also the Smaller details that they might not not notice. So number one is this little S in patterns, plurals. So I'll be looking for multiple patterns. And number two is this, this four marks. So for four marks, I typically would want at least three patterns plus one explanation of the patterns. So it's a little exercise. Can you guys see some patterns in this graph? So we'll be teaching our students to really identify these patterns, but I will go through them with you. The first pattern is that as I get a bigger molecule. The boiling point goes up. Now, this is true for both the alcohol and the thiol. The second pattern is that the alcohol is always, always has a higher boiling point than the thiol. And the third pattern is that the gap between the boiling point decreases as you move across, as you increase in size. And now, here comes our last mark, which is going to be explaining. And this is where the A logical rationale really helps you, because if you think logically, then you can put it onto words logically, and you can communicate the marker to the marker in a logical and succinct manner. So, for the simplest pattern, 
which is why boiling point why bo the boiling point of both alcohol and thiols goes up as I get larger, well I've explained it to you before, but it's because I have a larger surface area and therefore I can make more attractions and attractions. And if I have more attractions, I need more energy to break the molecules apart and therefore I need a larger boiling point. So I hope you guys can see how, how our focus on both a foundation and both applying chemistry knowledge allows you to directly tackle pretty difficult um, H2C problem. And here's more lessons that I've learned, which I'm going to pass to the students. So what I encountered is that sometimes I tend to make a lot of silly mistakes. What I realize that if I'm making the same silly mistake over and over again, it's not just a silly mistake, it's just a mistake and I just need to co learn to correct that. And people don't recognize it, but it's really important trying to do the best that we can and to stop making the mistakes, you're missing a skill, right? So either you're missing a skill to, or knowledge to effectively communicate with your marker. If you're trying to write a lot in the hopes that you'll get some marks, that isn't very good. You want to be logical and succinct. The marker knows immediately, boom, full mark response. You might be lacking the planning and foresight when tackling questions. So planning and foresight refers to, you know, reading every single word in the question, underlining keywords, but then also looking at how many marks and planning your response beforehand. So you know how I said for this question, I'd look at the trends and then go explain the trends. That's the structure, right? It's trend one, trend two, trend three, and then explain. That's a clear, logical, succinct structure that allows you to get all the marks for that question. And lastly, it's also the ability to deal with, you know, the exam or time pressure. You might not have enough time to do um, the questions. And that's because of your planning. That's because of your knowledge. It's a skill that can be developed. And lastly, it's your your revision skills as well. So if some of you find that by the end of the term, you're forgetting what you learned at the start of the term, you know, that's a problem because that means you, there's more revision for you to do before the exam. And now our course structure is designed with all of this in mind to try and, you know, impart the lessons that I've learned through my experience onto you guys. So first, here's our structure. You can see that we have a module one and module two accelerated uh, holiday course, and then we are moving at a faster pace than your school. So we are covering module three in term one, module four, module five. Now, the reason we've done this course is number one, you are going to be seeing and learning the content before your peers. Now, this allows you to spend the time in class asking your teachers questions and consolidating the information you already know. So you know how, for exam prep, by the end of the term, you forget what you learned at the beginning. Well, our course structure prevents that because when you go to school, it's revision for you all over again. You'll be seeing the same content that you already know in class again. And that makes you able to learn, but also remember the content. So you don't have to study as much for your end of term exams. You already know the concepts. You can skip the worksheets that your teachers hand out and you can go straight to the difficult problems. We'll be following the, obviously the NASA syllabus, but also putting a special emphasis on this core part here, which is working scientifically. A lot of people don't also don't realize the importance of working scientifically, which involves things like data analysis, problem solving, and questioning communicating. They're, they're also key skills and a key part of your syllabus, but people tend to tunnel vision on the content itself when this also accounts for a significant part of your internal assessments. That's why we formulated the exam skills to teach you how to make sure you check your answer, sig figs, states, all the things that people forget and all the common mistakes in the working scientifically portion will be incorporating it into our lessons to make sure that you understand and you won't forget anything when the time comes. And that's a brief summary of our um, HSC Accelerated Chemistry program at Top Logic. Now I'll introduce you to our second program, which is our um, Olympiad Chemistry program. I touched on Olympiad before when I explained my experiences, but I think Olympiad is absolutely a, a wonderful opportunity. So the Australian Science Olympiad is like a national science enrichment program basically. It's for students to extend themselves through challenging exams and stimulating difficult questions. And what it is, is basically a pathway to, for student development. It's for you to develop your curiosity, but also your knowledge of all of these sciences. Now, I'm gonna focus on the Chemistry Science Olympiads, but Vincent will introduce to the Physics one as well. Why should you participate? You should participate in the Olympiad because it provides really immense benefit. It's difficult to explain because it's not immediate benefits. It's not like immediately you become so much better. It's intangible and it's experience developed over the course of your learning. What it is, is basically once you finish, you'll find that you know so much more than everyone else. You'll be so much further ahead. But apart from that, there's other factors. Like it's an internationally recognized award and achievement program. Um, I've 
I've read that you, many international universities accept this as a prestigious award. I recall somewhere that MIT, like 40% of their undergrads have an Olympiad background. And also more tangibly, you get adjustment factors. So what adjustment factors are, are basically added points to your ATAR. So you get a plus five adjustment factor if you're applying to UNSW and some scholarships. For example, you get $5,000 to use it. But most importantly, it's like a really challenging but engaging environment for you to simply learn and grow. Now, I'll explain to you also the pathway. So there's this initial national qualifying exams, which will be preparing you for. Now, this is an exam. It's a three hour chemistry exam. And it's how they determine who is invited to the summer school. And summer school is the next step, basically. So 20 to 30 people in Canberra learning chemistry in a two week intensive course. And then from there, they'll select the Australian team members to compete internationally. So around 1,600 people sit the national qualifying exam. The top 10% of them achieve a high distinction and 24 to 30 are selected for summer school. So now I'll introduce you to the Olympiad course. What's important about the Olympiad course is that I've highlighted the overlap between Olympiad and HSC. And you can see that there is a significant overlap. So by learning the Olympiad course, you're kind of knocking two birds with one stone. You're hitting two birds with one stone. Not only are you able to participate in a prestigious internationally recognized competition to accelerate your learning, but you're also learning the foundations and fundamentals of HSC while you're at it. And this is a comprehensive course of everything you need to know for the exam, exam to prepare you for that three hour exam. By knowing this, you'll be definitely miles ahead of all the other entrants and you can set your eyes on achieving really excellent results. The whole Olympiad program is tailored so that you can develop your chemistry ability early for success later on. You'll be in a learning environment where there's experienced shooters to help you out. You'll have structured guidance and it's a rewarding, accelerating experience, accelerated experience for you to get ahead of the pack. In my closing few words, I just want to say that in our both our courses, we've distilled what we've learned through our three plus multiple years of chemistry learning so that you don't have to make the same mistakes that I did. So you can learn and hopefully achieve excellent results. Thank you guys.